Welcome back to New Zero Land. It's raining again. So I'm here with Tess. And we're going to charge up. Alright, I've talked about charging a lot before, but my new bike does it differently. So in this video, I'll sum up my feelings on AC and DC charging, which one's better, which one's faster, which one's more expensive. But first, a quick recap. AC is when you have a power source, like an outlet in your garage or a charging station or something. Then you have a charger, which is this magical box that puts that energy into your battery. The Zero, for example, came with this 1.3 kilowatt charger mounted under the bike. You plug in a cable from the wall to the bike, and it takes about 8 hours to charge. It's one of those things where you just plug it in at night and it's full in the morning and you don't really think about it. Same kind of thing with the Energica. It's got a 3 kilowatt charger mounted in the tail and you pop up the seat to plug it in. It's got a fan here to extract the hot air and keep it cool. At home I use one of these Tesla UMCs and it pulls 2 kilowatts. So it takes about 5 hours. Same kind of deal, you just leave it overnight. Super easy. But say your bike has a range of 100 miles and you want to ride further than 100 miles in a day. This is where you need a more powerful charger. If you've seen my other videos, you know where this is going. So with a Zero, you can get a 6 kilowatt charge tank, which drops your 8 hour charge time down to 2 hours. Or you could spend a bunch of money on aftermarket chargers with custom wiring and a custom tank with fans and heat sinks and charge it almost 10 kilowatts to bring the charge time down to 1 hour. That's what I did, and those were exciting times. The only downsides, plural, they're heavy, so you're adding way more weight to the bike and potentially losing your sweet cargo area, and they're also expensive. Like, I spent over 3 grand US for my chargers. And in New Zealand, you have to bring your own cables to the charging stations, which are also heavy and expensive. And you need a bunch of different ones, since everybody uses different shaped plugs. Yeah, let's just keep making new ones, shall we? And then there's the charging network, which is still kind of a work in progress. There are places to plug in just about everywhere, but they're all different. You have these high power AC stations at the warehouse, which is like New Zealand's Walmart. They're pretty much all over the place, and as far as I know, they're still free to use. The only problem is that they're pretty spread out, so I can barely make it with my limited range. And if I plugged in the Energica to one of these, it would take three and a half hours to charge. At a certain point, it doesn't matter how free it is, that's just too slow. Another AC option is campsites, but they use different plugs. In New Zealand, they're blue commandos, so you're going to need custom charging cables. These aren't very powerful, but you can string together outlets using multiple chargers with your custom wiring setup to cheat the system and charge super fast. Again, those were fun times. But campsites are usually way off the main road, so either you plug in your bike and then walk a few k's back into town for lunch, or you're stuck there waiting for your bike to charge. In general, it seems like the amount of charges you add to your bike determines your recharging speed, which determines how far you can ride in a day. But adding a bunch of aftermarket AC chargers to your bike and making custom adapters isn't for everybody. It was a really fun challenge, like saying, back in my day, we had to modify our bikes and bring our own cables. But that's a hard sell for someone who just wants to charge fast and hit the road. Which is where we segue to DC charging, the high flow pit stop refuel of electric vehicles. This cuts out the middleman charger man and goes straight into the battery. This is how Energica charges so quickly. Let's see how fast. When I told Jez how long it was going to take to charge, this was his reaction. <laughs> that is insane! Yeah. That is insane! So, uh, how much you, what percent you put in it? Just to explain charging speeds in relation to battery size, the Energica has an 11.7 kilowatt hour pack, so if you charge it at a speed of 11.7 kilowatts, it'll take one hour to charge, thus 11.7 kilowatt hours, because kilowatts is power and kilowatt hours is capacity. In a lot of the world, they actually talk about horsepower numbers in kilowatts. Just if you're wondering, the Zero is 50 kilowatts and the Energica is 107. Anyway, if you can charge that pack over 20 kilowatts, that's almost twice the power. So you're able to charge in half the time, and this is where the Energica shines. It's why I got it, and it's how I'm able to do long road trips. If your battery is big enough to do 100 miles on a charge, that's amazing, but if it takes 8 hours to charge, that 100 miles is pretty much all you're doing. Because there's the range you can do on a single charge, and the range you can do in a day, and those are two different things. So if you can get that charging speed down as far as you can, that means you're back on the road sooner and you're able to ride further. It's a whole lot easier to travel long distances on the Energica because these charging stations are everywhere in New Zealand. Again, charging it, you're awesome. Unlike the AC options here, DC is all over the place. These are 50 kilowatt stations and they do Chatamo and CCS. 
and the stations are usually right off the highway. I mean, that's the main road. It's too easy. So I can just ride up, plug in, swipe my little key fob, and I'm charging. It's not just that the charging is faster, it's the whole process. I don't have to ride out of my way to a campsite, talk to somebody who works there, explain what I'm doing, that I have an electric motorcycle, have a whole chat about that because it's always going to be the first one they've seen. And then it goes like, electric? I didn't even know those things existed. How far can you go? How long does it take to charge? Have you heard about the environmental impact of lithium mining? And you know, I like chatting about the bike. It's different. That's why I got it. Just let me plug in first and then we'll talk. But then this is where it's different at every campsite. They could let you plug in for free, or they could charge you $10, because they have no idea how much electricity you're going to use. Having so many of these stations around is a game changer, and I realize how lucky I am being in New Zealand, because I know it's not like this in most countries. If you don't have a Tesla with a million supercharger locations, you kind of have to wait for the infrastructure to catch up. We have these super fast recharging bikes, but in a lot of countries, there aren't places that can super fast recharge them. So at the moment, we're kind of ahead of the times. It seems like that's always the case. Ain't that just the way? In that respect, it actually makes sense why Zero is stuck with AC charging. I've talked about this before, but Zero is an American company and J1772 is everywhere. It's cheap to use, cheap to install. People can put little six kilowatt charging pods on the side of their cafe and people can just charge up while they eat. It's perfect. And then all you need are some adapters to charge at campsites or even Tesla destination chargers. Those are AC and they're all over the place. So building something that's compatible with what's out there already is a smart move by Zero, but it's not future-proof. You have to have both. AC for right now, and DC for tomorrow or next year. Even though the stations aren't there now, they will be soon. And if you can't use them, that means you'll either have to buy a whole new bike, or you'll be slow charging forever. And the end goal, right, is to get recharging times down as close as we can to filling up a tank of gas. It's the only way we're going to get more people interested in electric motorcycles. And this is the closest we've gotten so far. I mean, we just want to ride. We want to go places and we want to go fast. So let's crank that charging speed up as high as we can. I'm go fast, I'm go fast. There's more to DC charging than the speed though. The AC charges you carry and get hot. And when they get hot, they stop charging so fast. And when the charging isn't fast, that makes me sad. I experienced this way too much on the Zero, where you'd be charging at full power and then it would just slow down. And if the charger is right next to the battery, it can heat the battery up which also slows down the charging. So the benefit of the DC charging is that that heat is dealt with inside the station, and all you have to worry about is the battery heat, which the Energica has no problem with. It helps when you charge so fast that the battery doesn't have time to heat up. Just in case you were thinking that fast charging degrades the battery quicker, let me just kill that idea right now. The batteries don't seem to care, and there's so much battery management stuff going on that you really don't have to worry about it. As long as your battery isn't overheating and your cells are balanced, you can charge as fast as you want. Warp speed, Mr. Zulu! One downside of DC charging though, at least in New Zealand, is that most of these spots on the map only have one station. And it's pretty common to find someone already there charging. The station has two cables, but you can only use one at a time. If a Leaf already has the Chatamo cable plugged in, you can't use the CCS until they're done. And CCS is what Energica uses. Just south of the desert road in Wairoru... I'm so sorry. <laughs> there are two stations together and it's awesome. But that's the only place I've come across so far. So if you have two Energigas, for example, you have to charge them one after the other. And if a leaf shows up two minutes later, you're gonna have to give them the bad news that they won't be able to plug in for another 40 minutes. This happened to us up in Coromandel quite a few times. We managed to get to every station while it was empty, but we'd come back to swap bikes and there was a line of cars. Obviously this is not the norm, like 90% of the time I'm just plugging in in the garage while I sleep. But on road trips, when you're in a hurry, you really need more than one station, just in case this kind of thing happens. How Tesla does it, for example, that makes me jealous. Every spot has tons of superchargers. I need to talk to my boy Elon about getting them to work with Energicus. I will tell you this story though, to paint a picture of what road tripping on the Energicus is like. The first weekend I got it, I rode all the way from Tokoroa down to Wellington in about 8 hours. It's 450Ks or 280 miles, and Google Maps says it takes almost 6 hours just to ride. One thing you have to realize about New Zealand is that the highway goes through all these small towns, so you're constantly going from 100Ks an hour down to 50, then back up to 100, and you repeat this for the whole 6 hours. That's why relatively short distances like 450Ks take so long. Anyway, I ended up stopping at these six charging stations to top up. And by the end of the day, I used four full batteries. It's crazy to say, but it felt easy. 
DC fast charging has completely ruined me in the best way. Using high power DC stations isn't cheap though. Charging it costs 25 cents per kilowatt hour, which actually isn't too bad. Charging at home is a little cheaper, but whatever. You pay for the speed, right? Anyway, multiply that by 11.7 .7 and you get the price of a full charge, which is about three bucks. And I just turned an American quarter into three New Zealand dollars, uh, just to ignore that. But then they also charge you 25 cents per minute, so the longer you're there, the more it costs. I think it's so they get you in and out quickly so somebody else can come in and use it after you. Anyway, 25 cents per minute adds up, so you want your stop to be as short as possible, and this is where it turns into a game. You still want to keep your battery between 20 and 80%, partially for battery health, but also because going below 20% is scary. The same way going below a quarter tank is scary with gas. But it's also about speed. Like, sure, this is a fast charging station, but your charging speed isn't over 20 kilowatts the whole time. When it gets around 80%, it starts ramping down. Lex Summer actually did a great video explaining why it does this, and I'll link that below. But so, this means if you keep charging above 80%, your power is dropping, and the charging is slowing down, but you're still paying by the minute. So you're paying for slow charging, which defeats the whole purpose of this fast charging station. That's why on road trips, you really want to unplug at 80% to be in and out as fast as possible, paying as little as possible. That's the game. I know to normal people, I probably sound like someone who's really excited about gas stations and I'm planning my whole trip around them, but that's not really the case. That's definitely how it used to be. I wasn't enjoying the ride because charging was such a dominant part of the trip. But when you have enough of these stations and you can charge so quickly, that doesn't become the highlight. It's less about where you charge and more about where you ride. You can spend more time at the places you really want to stop rather than the places you have to stop. When it comes down to it, time is too precious for slow charging speeds. All right, that's my cue to unplug. So I just charged from 30% to 80% and it cost me about five bucks. And the time you guys spent watching this video was the same amount of time it took me to charge the bike. If that blew your minds, leave me a comment. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.